Hello, I'm Jared Weiss. I'm a professor of medicine and section chief of thoracic and head and neck oncology at UNC's Lineberger Comprehensive Cancer Center and a volunteer and executive board member here at Global Resource for Advancing Cancer Education. I'm pleased to speak to you today on the subject of treatment de-intensification in HPV-driven head and neck cancer. The interest in treatment de-intensification arises from, two, uh, from confluence of two thoughts. One is that many of our patients who we cure with locally advanced head and neck cancer permanently suffer morbidities that harm quality of life. In particular, patients can have stick ne stiff necks, they can have dry mouths, they can have problems uh, speaking, problems swallowing. From the chemotherapy, they can have uh, harm to hearing, particularly the high frequency uh, end of hearing, ringing in the ears, neuropathy, which is a numb tingling at the tips of fingers can even become painful, um, as well as decreased kidney function, uh, probably even leaving some out. So, which is to say that chemo radiotherapy is a rough thing to go through. And so we have interest in decreasing the intensity of both the radiation and the chemo to ameliorate these effects. Our standard dose of radiation is 70 gray, and it's notable that between 50 and 70 gray, there's a steep difference in the expected morbidity. So differences in this realm might be clinically uh, important for improving long-term quality of life. Of course, we want to improve quality of life in all of our patients, HPV-driven or smoking-driven, but the superior prognosis of HPV-driven cancer is the, uh, opens a window of opportunity to consider this. The data on the superior prognosis of HPV started in part from RTG0129. And one of the things that we learned from this study was that um, both in terms of cancer control shown at right, in terms of sur overall survival from any cause shown at left, uh, the HPV positive patient does much better than the HPV negative patient. And I apologize for the poor color coding here, but this has been confirmed in multiple other studies. And when you talk about low risk HPV, people who've uh, never smoked or had less than 10 pack year smoking history and who are not very advanced stage and HPV uh, positive cancers, we're talking about more than 90% cure rates. And so a natural question arising in the minds of clinicians um, who are upset by how much we're hurting people in the long run when we cure them is, can we decrease the intensity of the chemotherapy, the radiation therapy, or both, and preserve that high cure rate? So many of these studies done uh, have been kind of complicated and don't answer the question in a simple way. Um, my uh, colleague, uh, Dr. Bisham Chira, led an effort that in my mind was the simplest at both at decreasing the intensity of the study. So most patients um, got, uh, so patients got 60 gray of radiotherapy down from the standard of 70. Most patients got cisplatin at 30 milligrams per meter squared, which is a decrease from the simple, uh, the, the most commonly used regimen of 40 milligrams per meter squared. And those with the earliest stage, T0 to 2, which refers to a small primary where it started, and N0 to 1, which means not a lot of nodal spread, um, got no chemotherapy at all in combination with this reduced dose of radiation. And when you're looking at at the bottom are curves, looking at a variety of measures of interest um, to clinicians, and I imagine patients, and every x-axis is time, and every y-axis is percent of patients with the endpoint of interest. And whether you're looking at local regional control, meaning control in the head and neck, whether you're looking at distant metastasis-free survival, meaning absence of spread elsewhere, PFS, which ticks down any time cancer grows or a patient dies from any cause, or total survival, um, the most objective of measures, um, the outcomes were rather good. So the strength of this uh, and similar efforts um, are that the data are very good. Uh, the major um, uh, unmet need here is that this is not a randomized study. Um, the, to have what we call level one evidence, it, you would need to de-intensify the therapy in half of the patients, provide standard of care in the other half, and show what statisticians call non-inferiority. And we may, uh, we may never really get quite that level of data because of the extraordinary number of patients that would be required with the good prognosis of this group. But I will share with you, in addition to this study, what we know.